Here's the goal, a complaint-free, easy family dinner. Today, we are gonna make a killer meatloaf, and guess what? No loaf pans allowed. We're also gonna spruce up that ketchup glaze, and I'm gonna show you how to make it sit nice and pretty on top of your meatloaf. So let's get started. The first and only thing that you have to chop for this entire recipe is one yellow onion. So let me show you how to chop an onion like a professional. The first thing you're gonna do is take the tip right off. Now we've got a flat little surface where we can lay the onion down. We're gonna cut right through the root and we're gonna peel away the outer layer. Get the onion debris off your board and your hands. We're gonna start by making some slices going against the face of the onion here. Now we're gonna turn it around and we're gonna make some cuts going this way across the top of the onion. And now to make one final dice, we're going to cut in the opposite direction across the top of the onion. Once you learn this little onion chopping trick, your life will forever be changed when it comes to veggie prep. Next, we're gonna add a whole bunch of flavor to the bowl. We're gonna start with a half cup of dried breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs are gonna help keep your meatloaf nice and moist. Sorry if you hate that word. Then to this, we're gonna add two teaspoons of kosher salt, one teaspoon of black pepper, three quarter teaspoon garlic powder, and a half teaspoon of onion powder. Now we're gonna moisten this mixture up with a half cup of milk, one large egg beaten, and one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Now you're gonna grab a fork and you're just gonna mix it all up. And I'm also gonna go ahead and add in all of my onion at this point too. Mix that. So here I have two full pounds of 80-20 ground beef. All of it goes right into the bowl. <laughs> I should have rolled up my sleeves better. But we're just gonna dig right in with our hands, your very best kitchen tools, and we're gonna start mixing. This is probably good. As soon as you start to see that breadcrumb mixture evenly mixed all throughout the beef, you can stop. You don't wanna overmix the beef or your meatloaf is gonna be really tight and tough. You want everything to be kind of loosey-goosey so it stays nice and juicy. <laughs> now, instead of grabbing for the loaf pan, we are going to reach for a rimmed baking sheet. Cooking the meatloaf on a rimmed baking sheet instead of baking it inside of the loaf pan is going to allow for heat to evenly circulate around the meatloaf in the oven. This is going to help the meatloaf to brown, which is going to make it taste better, and it's also going to help the meatloaf to cook faster and more evenly. It's totally worth it to take a second to line your baking sheet with aluminum foil. This way, absolutely none of that beef is going to stick to the pan. So this part is kind of fun. You can think of it a little bit like pottery class. We're going to mound the meat mixture here up in the center, and then we're going to shape it into a loaf. You wanna shape your meatloaf a little skinnier and a little more narrow than you would think a meatloaf would look. And we're doing this because as the meatloaf bakes and that fat starts to sort of run out, it's going to shrink down and out. So you wanna start narrow and high so that it will end up in the traditional meatloaf form. Just like we packed the meatloaf with flavor, we're gonna do the same thing to this brown sugar ketchup glaze. You're gonna add two thirds cup of ketchup, two tablespoons of brown sugar, two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, half a teaspoon of kosher salt, and a quarter teaspoon each garlic powder, onion powder, and black pepper. Everybody's in the bowl, and now we're just gonna give it a stir. Bring the meatloaf back. And now here's my little hack to getting a thick, gorgeous glaze on your meatloaf. You're gonna add half of the ketchup mixture now. We're gonna set this aside and we'll bring it back later. 
All right, y'all, so we're gonna ship this off to a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven and we're gonna let it bake for 35 minutes. At that 35 minute mark, I'm gonna show you how to add the rest of that yummy glaze. The meatloaf is halfway baked. Now we're going to add a second layer of that delicious ketchup glaze and we're just gonna spoon it right over the top, fill in any gaps. Then we're gonna pop the meatloaf back into a 350 degree oven for an additional 30 minutes. As soon as the internal temperature of your meatloaf has registered 160 degrees or higher, your meatloaf is done. So now we're just gonna check the temperature. I'm gonna insert my instant read thermometer into the center most point of the meatloaf and we are good to go. The first thing I'm gonna do is just remove all the yuck from the sides of the meatloaf. Just get all that out of here. Come in with my spatulas, scoop right underneath, plop it right here on the platter. And I know that I told you that all the chopping was done with the onion, but if we wanna make it extra, extra, extra pretty and presentation worthy, we're also going to go ahead and chop up some parsley. Just gonna tear the leaves right off a little tiny bundle of parsley here, pinch the leaves together, and then mince it really small and fine. Hit it with a little green. I mean, it's basically Christmas right now. Check it, guys. This is one seriously good looking, juicy meatloaf. I'm going to slice into it. I'm gonna serve it with a big giant heaping pile of buttery mashed potatoes, maybe some peas, and we're gonna call it dinner. And listen, if y'all are on the hunt for more delicious family dinners to try, be sure to check out my comfort foods playlist next.